Hi, I'm Phil from Breaking Cycles and today I'm going to show you how to prepare to ride. Preparing to ride can take a couple of minutes and it's important to keep it quick and simple if you're planning to use your bikes for transport. It can also be a much more involved process if you're going for a bigger ride. So obviously planning to ride all day and planning to ride to the shop require two different uh, levels of bike check. The first thing I'm going to show you is a quick bike check, the sort of thing that I do several times a day um, as I go about my day-to-day -day life. So here's my bike. I'm going to lift it up a few inches above the ground and drop it. What I'm listening for is any rattles, any signs that things are, are loose. I'd hear things around the chain, around the headset, or around the wheels if there was a problem. If the tyres were flat, it wouldn't bounce back. So the only essential thing I need to check now is my brakes. So holding the rear lever, I'll lean back and see that that rear brake's holding the front lever and lean forwards and I'll see that the front brake's holding. So I'm pretty much ready to go for that short ride to the end of the street to the shop. I've got my bag here to put my stuff in. Inside that bag, I've got a neck tube. My neck tube is going to be used to replace the hair that I don't have. I can also be used as my mask when I get to the shop. That's a good thing to carry. My helmet, I'm going to adjust out at the back, pop on my head, tighten up, check that that fits right, but I'm making sure it doesn't fall off, and then secure it with the strap, which needs to be a couple of fingers width away from that my chin. The only other things I'm going to carry, because this is just a short trip, is obviously my bag to carry my shopping in, a can of puncture repair, repair foam just in case, and a lock to keep the bike from getting nicked when I get to the shop. So that's me ready to go. I'm going to show you that helmet fitting in a little bit more detail. Um, on the back of that helmet, you can see there's a dial. So I should always start with that um, open so that it goes comfortably on my head. Because uh, if it's not comfortable, I'm not going to wear it. The reason I start with it open is depending on the weather, um, I might either be putting it straight onto my head or I might have a hat underneath. So I'm going to fit it to this neck tube. You can see that wobbles around a bit. Using the dial, I've just tightened it up so that it feels like a hat. It doesn't feel tight and restrictive. The front of the helmet is just above my eyebrows. It's not up here, it's not in my eyes. It's just in the middle of my forehead. When it comes to the straps, that with this adjuster here is set so that it's just far enough from the bottom of my chin for me to be able to open my mouth and breathe and talk without it coming loose. If it does take an impact, it's going to stay on, but it's not going to choke me. Again, it needs to be comfortable or I'm not going to choose to wear it. So that's pretty much helmets. Um, the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how I prepare for a longer ride. In this case, it's going out for a couple of hours um, in the winter. I'm now prepared for my two hour road ride. I've got my favorite cap on, 
these caps are great because they provide an extra layer for your head and the cap prevents rain from coming down into your eyes particularly good if you wear glasses I'm also going to put my lycra trousers on not for reasons of style but because they're comfortable they allow you to move freely and most importantly if they're not baggy they can't get caught up in the chain shoes with a stiff sole are a good idea for cycling these are specific cycling shoes I'm wearing a technical t-shirt underneath that I have a base layer so that keeps me nice and warm without being too bulky and on top of that I'm going to put this yellow and black soft shell jacket which is waterproof on the outside fleecy on the inside in the pocket of this jacket I've got a little bit of money just in case I'll probably spend it on a brew but it, it's there for an emergency I've also got my mobile phone which I'm going to put in my back pocket that's an essential piece of kit because if everything else fails you're going to need to ring someone to get that help all the things I'll carry are a bottle of water and a small toolkit in this toolkit I have a small multi-tool which has some spare chain links and can connect together to make a chain splitter and it has a range of allen keys and screwdrivers and, and stuff that you might need to fix um, minor problems so I'll carry that I'll also carry an inner tube a CO2 pump a spare cartridge in case I get two punctures or make a mistake and some self-adhesive puncture repair patches um, for the same reason so it's like a plaster for your inner tube so all that can go in that little bottle that'll sit neatly on my bike so now it's just a case of uh, put my helmet and gloves on and uh, go and do an M check to fully check my bike before I go for a longer ride. So I'm going to perform a more in-depth bike check. This is called an M check. It still only takes a couple of minutes. We call it an M check because it involves drawing an M shape across the frame of the bike. So you start down here at the, M, the wheel nuts. Check that that's nice and tight. Check the quick release lever at the other side. Trace up. I'm going to check brakes when we get to the handlebars. So I'm just checking the tire. I'm giving it a squeeze. Feels nice and hard, so I know that's pumped up. And get to the top around the seat post collar. Just check it for very obvious reasons. It's not pleasant having a seat come loose. So checking that that's nice and secure. By giving it a bit of sideways wiggle and it is it's nice and safe then we come to the bottom of our M and look at our pedals by back pedaling I can make sure that the chain is running properly and that that's working I can also feel if there's any movement in the pedals so checking both sides is important quickly coming back up to the top of our M we get to this headset area a little bit more to check here so the first thing I'm going to check is that the headset itself is tightened up properly by holding the wheel between my legs and just checking that, that those handlebars don't twist and they're nice and secure this is also the point 
where I'll check my brakes, just like we did on the quick check. Front lever, push forward, nice and safe. Back lever, pull back, and that brake holds as well. And we can go further down and check tyres and skewers. Whilst we're doing our M check, we might also want to lift the bike up, spin the wheel, and just look that it's running straight. And I can do that for the back as well. This is also an opportunity to have a quick visual check of my brake pads. And if I can see that there's plenty of rubber still left, I know that they're safe. So that's my M check. This bike's fine. I'm off for a two hour ride.